So up first, we have Anina Roop, Geospatial Analyst with Ducks Unlimited Incorporated. Um, Ms. Roop has over 13 years experience with GIS and remote sensing focused on natural resources and conservation in public and nonprofit organizations. She is highly proficient in cartography, data management, and web map and application development. Anina has experience in supplying geospatial solutions to a wide variety of project types, including agriculture focused, private and public lands and water resources, scaling the solutions as the projects grow. She has a Bachelor of Arts in Biology and Chemistry from Wartburg College in Waverly, Ohio, and a Master of Science degree in Ecology with an Environmental GIS Certificate from Western Illinois University in Maycomb, Illinois. Anina is here to present identifying Fine. potential locations for water quality wetland installation using GIS modeling. Good morning. Can you hear me just fine? Yes. Good. Um, like was said, my name is Anina Roop, and I'm a geospatial analyst with Ducks Unlimited. Today, I'm going to be talking about DU's partnership with the Iowa Department of Agriculture and Land Stewardship, also known as IDAL, to create water quality wetlands in Iowa. Slide. DU is a 501c3 nonprofit science-based organization founded in 1937 by hunters to conserve habitat of the nation's waterfowl, which were suffering due to drought. Since then, over 15 million acres have been conserved in North America by partnering with federal, state, and local governments, nonprofits, tribal groups, universities, and private landowners. Ducks Unlimited works internationally with Ducks Unlimited Canada and Ducks Unlimited de Mexico, focusing efforts in waterfowl breeding and non-breeding landscapes and secondary priority areas. These areas have been noted for waterfowl significance, which allows us to advance in our mission of conserving, restoring, and managing wetlands and associated habitats for North America's waterfowl, but they also benefit other wildlife and people. Slide. Wetlands provide habitat for a broad range of mammals, birds, amphibians, reptiles, fish, and insects. They help control flooding by slowing down and storing water and clean water as it moves through the system. Wetlands provide different types of recreation, which in turn is good for the economy. Plus, they're beautiful. Slide. DU delivers a broad range of projects that are far too numerous to describe here, but here are a couple of examples of typical projects delivered on public lands in Iowa. The fish barrier helps the land managers keep unwanted fish, like Asian carp, out of a body of water while the water control structures allow for manipulation of water levels in the wetland to promote desired vegetation growth and water depth, among other things. The DU team designs projects specific to the location, providing a tailored solution for best managing an area. Slide. As mentioned earlier, one benefit of a wetland is its capability to improve water quality. Many of you are aware water quality issues have been plaguing many areas in the United States and is thus forefront in people's minds. One of the big concerns is the Gulf of Mexico hypoxia zone, also known as the dead zone. This has occurred mainly due to nutrients that enter rivers and streams upstream from the mouth of the Mississippi River. These nutrients come from many sources, but a main one is agriculture. Growing food and raw materials for non-food products has intensified over the years, putting pressure to create more on the same or even less area of land. Advances in technology like new seed varieties and better pesticides and fertilizers have allowed production rates to increase. However, we have also seen the downsides to these technologies. In response to the excess nutrient-caused hypoxia zone, the Mississippi River Gulf of Mexico watershed Nutrient Task Force was created, and they charged 12 states along the Mississippi River and the part of the Ohio River to each create a nutrient reduction strategy to help mitigate these downstream issues. Slide. Historically, DU hasn't been integrally involved in agricultural settings, because a lot of these areas are upland. However, we are developing new partnerships to work on landscapes in a couple of different ways. We are identifying areas of low productivity that could be transformed into wetlands, and we are helping to deliver conservation strategies, like planting cover crops 
in utilizing rotational grazing on uplands and agricultural lands that benefit landowners and the downstream watershed. We can apply our wetland expertise to maximize the water quantity and quality benefits for everyone. Slide. One of the ways we are doing this is by partnering with IDOLS in locating, designing, and building wetlands in ag-intensive landscapes. This relationship has allowed us to find new funding to help landowners afford taking land out of production and install wetlands on their property. According to an Iowa State University study, a properly located and designed wetland can remove between 40 to 75 percent of nitrates in the water that flows through it. IDOLS has installed over 100 water quality wetlands over about 15 years, which they identified by manually searching imagery. However, to reduce the nutrients in our water to the levels outlined in Iowa's nutrient reduction strategy, we need to install between 5 and 7,000 wetlands. So DE was tasked with automating the location and prioritization process to get more wetlands on the landscape faster. Slide. To start finding locations, DU decided to focus on areas which were existing depressions, those areas that are lower in elevation than their surroundings. This is because an existing depression is more likely to have wetland soil properties, making it easier to implement and requires less dirt work to move in the construction phase. Iowa has a great resource of statewide one meter LIDAR recently collected and made available all for free. The LIDAR data are fed into the white box tools stochastic depression analysis script, which identifies areas that are likely depressions. In this image, the dark and light yellow lines were identified by the analysis as likely being depressions. Once the SDA is complete, depressional areas greater than one acre in size, seen here in light yellow, are extracted and elevation and depth calculations are completed for use in the prioritization section. We are focusing on a couple of different types of water quality wetlands in this partnership, the differences being where they are located. Crep style wetlands are installed by building a berm across a stream, backing up water upstream in a pool. Floodplain style wetlands divert water from a stream to a nearby depression and, after a time, exit the depression back into the stream. Tiles on wetlands are filled by daylighting tile into a depression. This consists of breaking and exposing agricultural tile in a field and then draining the wetland to a stream or right back into the tile system. Currently, we are focusing on CREP and floodplain style wetlands in our models as we don't have extensive data regarding public tile and drains, not to mention private tile. The workflows for the CREP and floodplain style wetlands are similar, so I won't be distinguishing them in the remainder of my presentation. Slide. We decided to prioritize wetlands by creating a model that uses eight parameters, which then are summarized into a model score, where the higher the score, the better the site could be for a water quality wetland. These parameters are, Presence of ag land, absence of national wetland inventory wetlands, type of intersecting stream, presence of hydric soils, average depth of depression, and a combination of several of these parameters. In addition to the model score, several other attributes are assigned, like presence of wind turbines and existing conservation easements, and proximity to protected lands and airport runways. Those depressions that intersect a utility line are removed from consideration due to possible permitting issues. Slide. Once the model is run, the depressions are added to a privately shared online web application for biologists review. The biologist looks at the depressions with a model score of between six and eight and assigns a second score, whose value is determined based on a review of a depression's attributes and landscape conditions. He can see all the data used to populate the model score, along with other layers like aerial imagery and contours to help inform his score. Slide. Once the best scoring depressions have been reviewed, I create a set of maps for those depressions with a biologist score between two and three, showing the depression, the extent of a 100-year flood event and easement boundary, along with estimated drainage area the wetland would serve topographic contours, and soil types. The flood extent line shows the land potentially impacted by large storm events. 
the easement boundary encompasses the depression and flood extent lines and marks the land that will be placed under easement, which legally sets what can be done on the area. These maps serve several purposes. They provide a basis for additional review by biologists and EIDL, provide soil summary data for payment calculations, and if deemed appropriate to contact a landowner to gauge their interest for use as a visual aid in the project proposal. Slide. Following identification of priority sites, the biologist reaches out to the landowner or landowners affected by the proposed project to gauge, gauge interest and answer questions. He works with the landowners to tailor the project to the goals of the landowner to make the project beneficial for all parties involved. DU engineers are then brought in to review the site, conduct surveys, and create the design plan. Once the landowner is satisfied with the design, the easement contract is signed, the landowner is given the easement payment, and the wetland is installed. We are also expanding our work to cover additional areas now that the models have been completed on the initial areas of interest. Slide. Currently, we have reviewed 5,200 depressions in several sub-basins watersheds and subwatersheds. The dark gray areas are those in which we have completed site review, and those in green are the areas in which we are currently completing the location and prioritization workflow, which are newly added to expand our work. From the reviewed depression sites, I have created 786 map sets, which is shown on this map as yellow dots. The biologists and other partners are in the process of contacting landowners to propose projects and working with those who have shown interest. We currently have five sites with designs in process and four other sites whose landowners are moving forward with the design steps. I should note that several of the sites weren't identified through this model, but were identified by IDOL who was working with DU for the engineering steps. Slide. This project utilizes several different types of technologies, heavily relying on the Esri suite of programs. I use ArcGIS Pro in the location and map creation sections of the workflow. Additionally, I have created several Python scripts to automatically run portions of the data acquisition and model processes. The biologists, engineers, and partners utilize many web applications made for reviewing specific projects in specific areas of interest and for updating attribute information. Access to these apps have been centralized using Experience Builder to make a hub, making the apps quicker and easier to use. The hub's main screen shows a dashboard that summarizes key data points, which allows for easier reporting and identification of tasks that need attention. In addition to the hub, we utilize tasks by Planner and To-Do in Microsoft Teams in the first part of the site review. Ideally, this would all be done in an Esri program to make the workflow simpler with less toggling between programs. But we needed the capability for several people to provide more extensive notes than what could be done in a geodatabase. Teams is also a very good place to store all maps, which then can be attached to cards in tasks, eliminating the need to search for attachments. Since some of our partners are outside of our organization and don't have access to an organizational ARC Online license, we have utilized ArcGIS Community to provide ARC Online accounts, which our partners can use to collaborate on the project. Using these different tools, the status of every depression identified in the model can be visualized, summarized, and updated, providing users access to real-time data. It removes the possibility of using old versions and out-of-date date, out data, reducing error and streamlining workflows. Slide. More broadly, the DUGIS team provides many other services. These include map creation, national wetland inventory update, easement monitoring assistance, decision support tools and analyses, and support for other agricultural programs. If you're interested in hearing more about our work, you can look us up on the web at ducks.org, or you can contact me directly. If you're interested in working for Ducks Unlimited, postings are made available on the DU website. These frequently include GIS internship positions, which provide valuable GIS skills needed for a career in geospatial science. This concludes my presentation. Thank you for attending. If you'd like a list of my resources I've referenced throughout this presentation, please contact me, but I'm happy to answer any questions.